So I had to I had to up my game this week, as you could as you can see. Yeah, you you really put me to shame last week. You had the the nice tie on and and I and and the shirt with the monogram and everything. And all I had was this like seven year old sweater from J Crew. Or actually, I think that sweater was like ten years old. Still holds up nicely. So today I am wearing my Break the Internet in 2010 outfit. The uh, khaki cotton jacket with a blue, uh, ice blue shirt and a. Oh, that's ice blue. Looks like white. That's cool. Knit tie. Mm. Knit tie. It does have the bottom. Very nice. How do you feel with the with the tie knot of knit ties? Do you double them? Because I feel like they get really thick and I don't like that. Yeah, I, I do. Only because I have a really short torso. Mm hmm. So ties tend to be really long on me as a matter of, yeah, as a matter of, I have long legs and a short torso. So as a matter of fact, sometimes I have in the past with a really long tie that I can never get tied right. Even if I like double loop it and around twice and everything, I actually like cut the, the back off. <laughs> oh, really? no one, yeah. No one sees it. There, there've only been a couple of times I've done that, but, but now people yeah, know. Now, now people know, right. I do hate tying knit ties though. I feel like it's really hard to get a dimple the way I like it. And they always kind of like go over to the side and I always pinch the knot when I'm done to just get it like in this, this kind of, kind of triangle. Yeah. Look. This is, I, with a knit tie like this, I like to use just a, a foreign hand or a double foreign hand. Most of my other ties I use, a like a, I guess it would be like a variation on the Nikki knot. I don't know if you know that one. No, I don't. I, I only use a plain knot. I don't use any other knot. What's a plain knot? It's just you wrap around once, put it through, then again. That's just, I, as far as I know, it's called plain knot. Plain knot? Yeah. yeah. So just like a really, really simple one. Yeah. yeah I like the Nikki knot or whatever variation of it that I use for a couple of reasons. It's like a, it's not perfectly symmetrical, mm -hmm. which I like. A lot of people like sometimes on the channel, they'll get will say, hey, your knot sucks. It's not symmetrical, but it's not supposed to be symmetrical. I think mm -hmm. the the more perfect things are, the less right they look. Absolutely. That's why Italians started Sprezzatura. Like they leave out small details, but on purpose to make it look unperfect. And that's what, imperfect. That's what some people complain about. But I like that too. Like yeah. when the, 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 the shorter end is longer than the, the, the other one. Yeah, if you, that's if you leave your monk straps, the, the one, of, one of the straps open. It's yeah. cool. I like that too. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing I like about that, other than it's not exactly symmetrical, is it makes like the perfect dimple. Perfect. Okay. Every single time. And then when you untie it, you don't have to, there's no knot in the tie. It just unties all perfectly. Nice. So that's why I like that. I think we could do that. We could make this a thing. Like next time I'm going to dress up again and you're going to be dressed casual. That would be kind of cool. Don't you think? Keep people guessing. Yeah. <laughs> I know that shirt that you're wearing. Ah, oh, tell me about it. Where is it from? Pini Parma. Uh uh. No. No. Oh, it looks like it's Pini Parma. Uh, <laughs> the, the the polo with the long placket. I, yeah, yeah. It's it, the the color tone is very similar. But this is this is Eton, yeah. Oh, Eton. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. How do you like the Pini Parma? I, I love it. Absolutely love it. I, as I as I mentioned in my captions. I just love that you only need two pieces of them, like the shirt and trousers. You already look super classy. Yeah. That's hard, hard to achieve. When we did the video, when I did the Pini Parma try on video, I had a conversation, a phone conversation with Tomas, the founder mm -hmm. of the brand. And it was really interesting to talk to him because he, he used to work at Boji. I think you know that. Yeah. He told me. Mm -hmm. And he just wanted to do something a little more sartorial. And I love how they just stick to basics. It's, it's, if you, if you happen to buy the whole collection, you're good for a while. You probably wouldn't need anything, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. But that's where you end up because everything's so nice that you just, you can just get everything and you're set. I was super impressed with the pants. Oh yeah. The trousers. I I've never found a better off the rack fit for trousers than PD Parma. I think the waist was perfect. I like that it's a little bit higher, but not too high. I got the pants with uh, pleats and the taper on them was absolutely perfect. I was blown away. 
literally. I agree with you. It's a, it's the first time that I really had had a a pants that really fit on the waist. Uh, I was talking to him about the size. He mm -hmm. said, measure your pants you got now. So I'm sending pictures on WhatsApp. And he said, yeah, this looks like you need a 46. And I'm like, I don't think so. He's like, yeah, you need a 46. So he sent me 46. And you know what I needed? 46. Yeah, it was right That's on. Perfect. Yeah, it was right <laughs> on. Yeah, well, he knows, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. What were you going to you, you thought you needed a 44? 48. 48. I am, yeah, I'm used to 48. I've always got 48. And uh, this is the first time I got 46. And he oh. was super right about it. And as you said, it fits perfectly. Yeah, I I was blown away. I, as a matter of fact, I got a forty six as well, but I also got a forty eight because I was I was on the I was on the fence. I didn't believe it either. So the forty eights I actually had to have taken in. Mm, okay, okay. <laughs> Though there's nice. there, there is something else I've been wanting to ask you about as I've been looking at your stories and Instagram and everything, and that's uh the watch you've been wearing recently. Which one? The. Gigi? Yeah. The Master Ultra Thin. Oh, yeah, I love that one. In pink gold. Oh, my God, I love that watch. When we were in London, as a matter of fact, uh, I had the steel version of that that, mm. I, that I wore for uh, a couple shots. It's, it's such a nice watch. And then when I went to visit the manufacturer, I wanted to try on the pink gold, which is the one you're wearing now, right? Mm. Man. And then... Alex, a photographer that uh, they use all the time, he took some really great pictures of it. I love that watch. There's, there's like, there are so many watches that I want. That's up there though, for sure. I love that one too. It's super classy. It's uh, very decent. People don't can't spot it, and that's that's what I love about Gigi. Is that you? Uh, I ride the train all the time, and people see my wrist, and they they can they don't know what I'm wearing, and that's that's cool. I like that. That one's so easy to set too. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's one button to set the entire perpetual calendar. It is. It is. Yeah. One button. Uh, I know you love JLC. I, I think you have one on your wrist right now, right? Yeah. That's the, uh, the classic reverse. So it's the first dual face. Can you see it? Yeah. Hold it up to the, hold it up to the camera. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know that one. So it's the, uh, the dual face. Yeah. You can switch the dial, which is kind of nice. Yeah. That's nice. I've got on, uh, I know you like Omega. Ooh. It's a, uh, this is new. It's a pre-bond Seamaster. Super thin. Yeah, it's 36 millimeters. I think it's from the early 90s. Oh, so nice. it does have, well, the first bond Seamaster was 1995. And before that, they called, that's why they called them pre-bond. Because it was before Bond started wearing the Seamaster. But uh, I love the case size. And it's got a really nice patina on it. I found it on eBay. I love eBay. Absolutely love eBay. There's so much to find. You got to be careful. I I know I'm always worried, but they have a they have a good program. So, yeah, yeah lucky. As far as as far as I know, if you um if somebody says something is original in his description, and it turns out not to be, you can just send it back or get your money back. Oh, really? You, of course, do it with uh, with PayPal. But um, that's that's where that's the way how I always do it is I check the description if somebody says this is original this is yeah the right condition and it has to be in or else you get the money back. It's scary to buy watches like that online. Yeah. Um, what speaking of watches, we are going to get to the topic of this video. But <laughs> speaking of watches, like what are a couple that are on your wish list right now? Um. I think there are, there's one Patek, but I do not know the reference number. When is it? Uh, I don't know the reference Wait. number. It's it's a it's a perpetual calendar as well. But ah. to be honest, I I don't really want to know the reference because else I'm just gonna look it up on Chrono and yeah. uh, <laughs> that's just I, I got for them for now. I got enough watches. Yeah. Uh, got gotta be gotta I then then get enough wrist time anyway. Mm -hmm. So I better be uh be very um. Yeah, take the time for those watches and maybe in a year or something I'll continue with my collection. I always want to add things or swap things out. I, I need to do another watch collection video because it's changed so much since I did the first one. It was, I think it was about a year ago. Um, a couple surprises, I think, for people Ooh. who know that, that collection video. Still two pieces I really want to add are, well, we just talked about one of them, the Master Ultra Thin Perpetual from JLC. I really love the uh, longer one 
Langa one is sort of like uh, my, you're a Langa fan. I, I remember yeah. the flyback chronograph. Yeah, the uh, the, uh, the data graph, and then the other one that I've wanted for a while is the AP. It's a forty one hundred BA. It's all gold, and the one it has a gold dial as well. It's a thirty six millimeter. Some of them okay. are quartz. Are some of them quartz? The ones I have seen are, are automatic, but I just love that watch. The Royal Oak. Royal Oak, yeah. Mm, I think it's a classic. Yeah, from the the forty one hundred BA, I believe is from like the late seventies, early eighties, depending on when. There's one on Chrono twenty four right now. Hmm. I just can't. <laughs> yeah. I, I know exactly. I just I, at the, for the, for now I just stopped watching, uh, looking at Crow Twenty Four because it just it, it gets me into gets me stupid ideas. You know, yeah, so. yeah, exactly. So here we are, episode two. This is now officially a series, I guess. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Now we're locked in. We have to do this. People seem to really like it. What was the feedback that you got from some of your followers? Absolutely. I also got some um, some messages from people watching the um, the podcast, saying it was a good for conversation. And uh, yeah, so it's it's great. Also, your YouTube uh, subscribers, I'm I'm astonished at how interested people are and and how much they're into the topic. It's just it's an honor. It's a big honor. Yeah, it's cool. I was I'm always thankful for all of the. The positive feedback that we get for the YouTube videos and everything, and this one was no exception. As I told you, you know, like conversations like this, longer form things, views typically are a little bit lower because it's really like the super fans who who want to tune in and, and get to know you and, and hear what hear what we have to say. But mm -hmm. the average watch time, I'm like a super metrics nerd when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> but like the time people were watching, and the click through rate. And all that was just sky high, much higher than normal videos. That's super cool. I like yeah. that. Hardly any negative feedback. The only one kind of constructive thing that came mm -hmm. out of it was people wanted to see, it was a few people chimed in and, and said, it would be cool if it was more topical, if you guys just focused on one thing and that was something that we actually discussed as we were preparing for this in the beginning is should we make it topical or should we just have it be a conversation mm -hmm. and see where it goes and i think maybe the answer is a compromise so right <laughs> so we've started off already kind of just catching up and everything but we do actually have a topic plan for this and that is um let me see how do I, how would you say it being a modern gentleman, or what does it mean to be a modern gentleman? That's a whole topic unto itself. It's a big topic. Yeah. So, yeah. What are your thoughts? Let's just let's just put it out there. It's such a rich topic that I don't have any bullet points, so I'm just gonna gonna throw something in, yeah. and then we'll see where it goes. Mm -hmm. um, to me, a modern gentleman first of all starts with the mindset. Uh, I think, of course, if you think about a gentleman. Uh, you first of all think about somebody dressed like you right now, but and that that is that is that is a very that is a big part of it as well, of course. But first of all, it is uh, being respectful, being attentive, um, and yeah, having having. It's hard to say. Um, yeah, let's stick to being being respectful, attentive, and having manners for now. What do you think? I agree. I want to dive into the topic of dressing and how that does or does not equate to being a gentleman. Mm -hmm. Because I think, you know, there are some people who have what I would call an atavistic view of men's style. Atavistic, mm -hmm. like kind of not of this place and time it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not oh, anachronistic yeah. but yeah there's just a certain way it should be and that was a while ago and, and so a gentleman is someone who wears a suit all the time and has a fancy mustache and a top hat and yeah. knows these things that's what a gentleman smoking a pipe or something yeah. <laughs> is that is that a gentleman is that what we have to have to aspire to to be a gentleman today 
I think that was a gentleman um, decades ago. Uh, that was the, the, the gentleman at that time. But nowadays, a gentleman is much more subtle, much more modern. Um, he still has kind of this very classic twist, which is kind of nice, but you don't necessarily have to. Um, I think it's more, yeah, as I said, more about the mindset. And in terms of dressing, um, it's more about being um, cleanly dressed and... Um, yeah, looking, looking fly. Looking fly. <laughs> do you have to have? Do you have to have? Do you have to have some sort of classic element to your style to be a gentleman? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, you have you have classic basic elements, and I would say that is something like a chino, something very gentleman. But also depends on on where you're going to. Um, if you're you're going out on a casual night, the chinos and boat boat shoes are really cool. But well, let's let's maybe say the core of a gentleman look is a crisp shirt. Crisp shirt. Yeah. See, so I would I would. I don't really know the answer to this. <laughs> and, Me too. And you know, from my perspective, there's an element of, of how you dress, but it doesn't have to be a certain way. That's saying like someone who wears a suit is a gentleman and someone who prefers more fashion or streetwear type stuff. Are they, can they not be a gentleman as well? That's, I think where the, the problem comes because I think you, they can. Absolutely. Yeah. Just because you dress a certain way doesn't preclude you or, or, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Doesn't eliminate you from the category of being a gentleman. Mm -hmm. You know, if I like to, yeah. if I like to wear runway fashion or like Rick Owens or something like that, am I, am I not a gentleman because that's what I like to wear? I don't think so. Is Nick Wooster not a gentleman? Personally, I haven't met him before, so I can't really tell. But from from, I th yeah, I, th I think it does convey a, a very gentleman, gentleman style. But um, it's a good answer, a good question, because I don't really know what it is. I think it's something about your attitude as well. You can you can be street style dressed, but if you convey the right mm -hmm. ideas or yeah, then then. Uh... Can I just tell a quick story about an encounter sure. I had with Nick Wooster? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> funny. I've, I've got a, it's got a story you got too. A story too. Uh, okay, well, I'll tell yeah, mine. It's, it's awful. It's awful. Oh no! <laughs> you you first. Okay, I'll tell mine first. This is, this is really funny. So back when this all started for me, I launched T Spoke Style in 2013. Things happened really fast, and that next summer, it was the summer of 2014. There's so there's an affiliate program here in America called Reward Style. Have you heard of it? I think I've heard, but it could really connect it to something. Yeah, re reward style. And they were throwing a big party. This is back when in New York Fashion Week still happened in Lincoln Center Plaza. Like that was where all mm -hmm. this stuff happened. And that's where all the street style photos were taken. So across the street from Lincoln Center is a hotel called the, oh, what is it? I can't remember the name of the hotel, but it's a famous hotel. And Reward Style was having a rooftop party for all the people that they worked with and so on during New York Fashion Week in the summer. So I went and uh, there's a huge line out the door to get in. And I get in the line and the girls are, you know, they're coming by and like taking everyone's name on the iPad, you know, and they, I was way in the back and Nick Wooster is right behind me or he gets he's in front of me or behind me one or the other we're right next to each other so i i have no shame so i just started talking with him he seemed like a super nice guy so the girls with the ipads coming through and she comes to me she's oh brian because they knew me i'd been to a couple of their other events in the past brian come on just go to the front and they like walked right past nick wooster i'm like who am i i'm no one this guy is a legend and you don't even recognize him so i was like hmm. i said hey this is my friend, Nick. Can he come with us? <laughs> so we went up to the roof and it was nice. And we, we, he was, he was a very nice guy. We had a nice conversation. And then the other funny thing that happened up there was that he, people just didn't know who he was at this thing. I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it, but 
So someone, some like influencer girl, I don't even remember who she was, asked Nick to take her photo, like in front of the, whatever, was mm. Kevin repeat that they had. <laughs> like there's this influencer girl who's nobody asking this icon, Nick Wooster, doesn't even know mm -hmm. who he is. Hey, can you take a picture of me with my phone? How did he react? He was very uh, generous and polite and he, he did it. I have a photo of him taking that photo. We'll put that up for the people watching the video. Yeah. Mm, nice. Yeah. No, he was, he was very, very kind, very smart, very intelligent. We had a great conversation and that's my, that was my first encounter with him and it was a positive one. So mm -hmm. your turn. <laughs> <laughs> it's so embarrassing because uh, that was at, at Pity Wobble. Um, I mean, his reaction was looking back to now he was, he was a gentleman, mm -hmm. but, um, at that point, um, I was with another influencer. His name is uh, on Instagram was JJ eight, eight fashionist. You remember this very flashy dressed mm -mm. Swiss guy. He was like wearing white pants with, uh, color sprinkles on it and red blazers and green ties and yellow hats. That's what he was dressed like. What year was, he's really cool. What year was this? What huh? year was this? Oh, that's, I think that was like 2017 or something oh. around okay. that, that time. And, um, we were downstairs in the pit, um, in the pity building and, um, we saw Nick Wooster standing in a corner with a woman talking and JJ was like, Oh, I, I gotta pick, I gotta have a picture with Nick Wooster. And, um, we were like, okay, we'll wait. We're a group of three or four people. And, uh, he was standing there and standing there and waiting. And I was like, what are you waiting for? He's like. I don't know. I think he's talking to that woman. I was like, yeah, but dude, we, we want to go upstairs. So hurry up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I was like, I'm going to do this for you. I went, went up to Nick Wooster was like, excuse me, Mr. Wooster, can we have a picture with you? He's like, I'm in an interview right now. Oh, can you please? <laughs> yeah. And, and I felt kind of, kind of like he was, he was, uh, being re very respectful towards, towards the women mm -hmm. because, uh, he was in an interview situation it was just a random guy coming up and disturbing them yeah. and that was that was not cool of me but to me in that moment i felt so ashamed and i feel like if if he sees me again he exactly knows who i am because he felt really he was very mad at that oh moment. that's too but, bad but you did but it was you didn't know mm -hmm. i mean you didn't know she'd have a microphone or anything mm -hmm. did she i can't remember but um yeah, that, that's that's the only re that's the only memory I have of Nick Wooster. Uh, it's like him telling me, like, dude, back up. I was oh, like, oh no. Damn. Mm. I thought you were gonna be like, well, you know, there were a couple guys with boom microphones and there were like ten cameras around their video. Oh, no. No, I'm just not at all. No, not, not that. It's just <laughs> <laughs> But that's that's the only memory I have of Nick Wooster. And uh yeah, it's it's funny that you always always remember something something negative so so intensely. Oh, because I mean he didn't he didn't do anything to me, but he was just being kind towards her and I felt kind of insulted. But at the end he was super, super correct and very polite towards yeah. her. And that was that's a good thing. I'm sure it would be water under the bridge if you met him again. <laughs> I hope so, but I don't think so oh. still. <laughs> oh. Do you, is there anything else you want to say about dressing and how that equates to being a gentleman or not being a gentleman? I don't know if there's an answer really. I like your idea of putting some care into it. Yeah. I think that I always say that how you dress, it says something about you, but it also says something to other people. It sort of, it shows respect to people in some way. Absolutely. That you respect them for being there. For example, I'm working on a video right now while we recorded it. No, we didn't record it yet, but there, there's a video topic I'm going to do how many suits do you need mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. and the first guy oh, this is a this is a preview of the video perhaps but the first guy i had is the guy who never wears a suit and i said the guy who never wears a suit still needs to have one suit because there are certain events that you go to that you should wear a suit to i'm thinking specifically of weddings and funerals right so even the guy who never wears a suit should still have a suit. And if he says, yeah, I don't, I don't need to wear a suit to that. Yes. I think, yes, you do. You yeah. do because 
you owe it to show the people who you are attending the event for, whether that's a wedding or a funeral, that I think it shows a measure of respect. Absolutely. Because you're, that's your message. If you show, if everyone's dressed in a suit mm-hmm. to a wedding and you're the guy coming up in blue jeans. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we can agree that, okay, we'll agree that there's some element of dress involved and it's just care you put into your per- personal appearance, whether that's you dress in suits or you dress in casual wear, but it's not the main thing, right? No, to being not. a gentleman. And you brought up some things that are more on the personal level, such as being respectful that I think that gets more to the heart of what a modern gentleman is today. Yeah, that, absolutely. That's, um, I see it the same way. Like, like, uh, like we, we had this image of this, uh, super well-dressed guy with a hat and, uh, that was a gentleman decades ago. And nowadays it kind of switched into a more, because dressing is so versatile. Um, that's why it's getting more into, to a character thing. And, um, also like making, like sharing, sharing positivity and, and happiness with people and just being, being polite and. Yeah, showing people that you care. That's being a gentleman. Like I, as I said, I ride the train a lot, and just if there's somebody running towards a train and you see the doors close and they're automatic, you just hold up the door and wait until this person's inside. And in that moment, you're just being attentive, you're being respectful, and and the person's happy. And it's you know, it's just this very small act you do. And yeah. those are the things. If you dress well and you just sit there you're like. It's not my business if this person gets a train or not. I would say I'm still going back to the, I'm still stuck on the, how do you dress thing? And people who, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. people who say you have to dress in a suit to, to be a gentleman. My question is, is back in the 1920s and thirties and forties, when all these people were wearing suits and looking dressed like that, like our picture of a gentleman, were they all gentlemen? Probably not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right probably not right don draper from Mad Men. Are you familiar with the show oh absolutely i've watched the first two or three episodes uh seasons it's, it's awesome yeah he dresses like a, a quote-unquote gentleman but i would say that he is does not act like a gentleman right absolutely right those maybe those things evolve over time but we're talking about a modern gentleman and that is definitely not a modern gentleman i'm pulling up right now a post that I wrote three years ago in 2017 and I called it welcome to the year of the gentleman. It was like the first post I did on the website of 2017 and we'll we'll put that up on the, the feed for the video that people can see, or it'll be the show notes too. People can refer to that if they're listening on their podcast platform of choice but i said uh, i'll just kind of paraphrase here as i'm looking at it Uh, okay so here i said three years ago more than three years ago being a gentleman goes beyond the clothes that you wear a man is a sum of his parts his life his work his interests his passions his sense of curiosity and adventure so when someone says being a gentleman it sounds like a bygone era there's a lot of information on how to dress like a gentleman, shave like a gentleman, drink like a gentleman, uh, but it's presented in a way that uh, the truth of that the art of being and acting like a gentleman is transcendent. So there are these things that equate to being a gentleman throughout time. Uh, so I had listed here several things that I think people should think about, and we can talk about each one of them perhaps still relevant today. Uh, So there's never been a better time to think about conducting yourself with dignity, respect, and kindness towards others. And that's what you were just talking about. I think that's perfect. And so that's why I said we're calling 2017 the year of the gentleman. Challenge you to embrace it. But I think you could call any year the year of the gentleman. It's always, I think it's a good thing to aspire to, to be better yourself, be more polite and kind to the people around you. Absolutely. And also like being a gentleman is a constant state, just not something you 
it's like you take off like a tie when you're done with work it's it's your whole mindset yeah. behind it and, uh, yeah i like that a lot yeah it, it it has to be you have to embody it so several things to think about and the first one i listed was politics oh we're just gonna let that hang there <laughs> politics politics so yeah. When it comes to respect, I think what I was trying to say here is it's, it's unless you're with like a really close knit group of people who, you know, share your viewpoints, if you're hanging out with new people or you're at a cocktail party or some kind of event, just, just out of respect for everyone, just leave it out of the conversation. If you don't have to talk about it, you know? Mm, okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I, I never really get into into politic discussions with people because um, yeah, that's it's a never ending story, you know. Yeah, and and, 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 and into, it's also a kind of a situation killer with some people. Either you're super super into it, and mm -hmm. then you get into a discussion, you're just nobody can follow, or you're just not interested in in it at all, and you don't want to follow. So yeah, um, that's why I, I have my views, and I have friends with different views, and. But they're very close friends, and we'll we'll argue every now and then about it. But I always kind of come when I argue with, my, not really argue, but if I get into something with someone, I always feel like I could like spend time better with them. You know, I understand they have different views, and no one's going to come out winning, really. Mm -hmm. You know, we just have. To... That, that, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> that, that's also what sorry. That's also what being a gentleman is about. Like, uh, and being being um, kind of a good politician in terms of. Um, letting people have their opinion and being able to mediate between people. I think that's also a gentleman aspect, uh, like not really insisting on what you think is right, but accepting what others think, even though you maybe you might not really agree, but yeah, like giving the person the, uh, the feeling that you, you heard what the person said, that you respect what the person said. And even though you might be of a different opinion, just, don't maybe tell sometimes don't really show it if it comes to politics. Yeah. I, I think in general, anytime there's not just politics, but anytime there's a competing, you know, two sides of a story, it's always good to hear both sides and try to understand and, and empathize with both sides. And you can have your opinion, but I think not only does that go to being a gentleman, but that's also a quality of a good leader. You're oh. able to hear what both sides of, you know, people maybe that you're in charge of are thinking and effectively communicate what those issues are and hopefully affect change in, in some kind of way. Mm. What, what just comes up to my mind is, um, as we said, a gentleman decades ago was, was dressed in a certain way. And since these people don't really, this kind of dressing doesn't really exist anymore. It's just awkward seeing somebody walking around dressed with a hat. Um, but I don't think that the, the spirit of being a gentleman is gone. That means um, even though people are not dressed like that, they still exist. So that means it's not really that much more about the dressing, but also like about the, the, the bigger picture of the person. Mm -hmm. uh, decades ago, was, it was just a dressing, and now it is much, much more. Yeah. Let's talk about now. Another thing mm -hmm. I think is important to have in this discussion, and that's phone etiquette. Phone etiquette, yeah, what do you mean? Phone etiquette, like always being on your phone, not present in the moment. If you're with a group of people, everyone's just kind of looking at their phone. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, I remember the Gigi Le Coutre event? We were just talking. We were talking to each other, looking into each other's face. And that mm -hmm. means being attentive, being in the situation with the person and showing the person that you really care about what he's talking about. And not just wanting to talk for yourself because a lot of people are always in, the, in this kind of state where they just they're just waiting to to talk again and don't really listen and genuinely listen to, listening to somebody is 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 a beautiful feeling for that person and yeah you start wanting to 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 talk more with that person i always i've said in the past that i'm a terrible blogger or social media person because when i go to events like that i probably don't do as much as i should for you know, being at the event or like chronicling the event, but I would much rather enjoy it, enjoy the absorb the experience, and be selective with with how I share what I what I am experiencing, rather than constantly being like, "Hey, look at me!" and everyone's here, and 
that's just i don't know absolutely i think and that is the tricky part about about being a blogger or being on social media is first of all being invited invited to 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 a, a nice party or or a great event mm. um but also being in that situation and and like engaging with people but afterwards engaging with the community as well that's why i do it the same as you do that's why we had such a nice discussion that evening i mean we could have both do our job and just be on the phone upload something mm -hmm. but then we, we wouldn't have genuinely met and sit here and talk right and uh, that's why i also upload it also at night that night i think i uploaded at like two or three a.m mm -hmm. i do that too i i'm it's not real time usually after when there's an event yeah we're talking about but yeah i'll take videos and then put them up later maybe yeah. edit the photos so I think another topic that'd be interesting to talk about is how to treat a woman. Mm -hmm. How to treat a woman. Yeah. Ladies, um, ladies first. Is that chauvinistic nowadays? No, I don't think so. It's also, um, I mean, there are some, some parts of those gentleman rules concerning treating a woman that are, antiquated like uh if, if you're you enter uh, if you enter a restaurant to me like holding up the door is something you just you just do because it shows her as i said being attentive it shows her like hey i i i i, I see that you're here i open the door for you to to help you and if i enter the door first like no man i don't mind what's happening after me and uh, that's the wrong message but what i find an antiquated is if you go to the table and you you insist on like pulling the chair back something like that you know if you do too much classic gentleman style it wouldn't be like i am not used to this what is happening you got to find the right balance we're we're there's an age difference between us you're 28 9 28 28 okay and i'm 42 i'm an old man so that's my quick calculation old man but uh, 14 years difference so probably you know maybe i don't know what 20 year old women expect these days you, you nothing have... that's why like oh. you gotta be very careful with being a gentleman nowadays uh, honestly that's that's my experience have you ever done something that you thought was you were being a gentleman or being polite and it was not well received by the the girl well there are a lot of women that um just that are not used to it that's why they find it kind of awkward receiving so much attention and somebody being that nice so there some of them are like i don't want one i don't want someone being that nice to me you know in that in that way being that attentive it, it makes it feel awkward mm. that's um but yeah they generally i'd say I, i'd always i always um evaluate the situation and if i have the possibility of showing like hey i'm, I'm attentive then then i do so and if not i yeah just don't do certain things women are very modern of course that's, that's maybe the stupidest thing i've ever said <laughs> but <laughs> but um and and my wife too she's she's young a little younger than me and she she's a very strong uh woman and and likes to do her own thing she doesn't need my help with anything you know but she she enjoys or she lets me know if i forget to open the car door for her <laughs> just say <laughs> so even yeah i think even someone like robin who's who's very modern and and sophisticated and and uh, she can she could do it on her own she's still in, she she likes when i do little things like that because as you say it shows her that i'm thinking about her mm -hmm. i agree yeah i wonder if people will have a different reaction to that because i feel like that's a whole topic we could talk about we could even bring in a couple i think we should talk about this again and bring in a couple of our female we should friends make this a series because else else uh as i said the topic is too rich to just uh talk about a few minutes and then go on with the next topic there is i think they're uh, also while thinking about it and that's why i'm very interested in seeing the comments afterwards if yeah. people have some topics they want us they want our opinions on i would love to to have that input and be working on that because as i said you you just can't fully grasp the whole theme in, in just a few minutes. Yeah. Well, uh, I had a few other little bullet points that I'd wrote in this post. And one was, I just looked at it and I totally just forgot about it. <laughs> oh, stop complaining 
That's what I said. Don't complain. Mm. I don't. Complaining is a waste of time and energy. And it's very German. Is it? Oh, 100%. Complaining is very German. Oh. Because I I got it in me, to be honest. Really? Like, oh, I, what do you complain about? I find my everything. <laughs> I find I find myself complaining uh, a lot, um, and that's why I'm I, I, I'm very German in that. But that's why you got to hold back. You got to realize the situation and think about that you're with people and you want to create a, a positive positive situation and not like. Of course, you can exchange negativity, but where's the fun in that? <laughs> Hmm. That's, uh, well, let me let that sink in a little bit. But was <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking, that's a German attribute. I didn't know that. Oh, if there are some, I, I saw one one guy commenting that he says there's a fellow German. Uh, he saw me as a fellow German. So this guy, a hundred percent, knows what I mean. Okay. What are some other German traits that you have? Because I think we established in the first conversation that you don't like beer. I thought that was mm -hmm. a German trait. <laughs> oh, it is. It is. Yeah. Um, in some some terms, are very German. Some not. No? And that is drinking beer. Mm -hmm. But what what else is very German? Um, I love I love details and perfectionism. Same. That is that is also very German. I have a little of bit course. of German in me. My mother's family. Well, they were Irish and German. Kilcullen was her maiden mm -hmm. name, but her. My grandma from her side was German. Her name was Muller. So maybe I got that some some of that from Yeah, her. that's Muller's. That's very German, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love details and all that systems approach to things. Like you have a problem, you make a plan to do it, and you execute it, and oh, the problem's gone. Or you, you've, you've accomplished something in a very system systematic way. Well, I have a question. You said Germans are very detail-oriented. And you didn't, you forgot to plug in your laptop. That's, that's a big detail to miss. <laughs> I know. That's why I like, maybe that's, that's, that's one of the parts that's more into the, I don't drink beer. Uh, kind yeah. of uh, anyway, <laughs> well, two more modern things I wanted to, to throw into the conversation here. And that was, this is only modern because of the times we're living in right now. And that was uh, shaking hands. I always thought that shaking hands was a nice gesture to someone extending your hand feeling you know the grip and everything obviously we're not shaking hands right now but how do you feel no, in general you're absolutely right and but also in that, that term i think um it depends on your the pressure of the handshake and the way you shake the hand it's like some people really try to get the upper hand and be like this oh. and also like grabbing grabbing your ankle like dude let go uh -huh. um <laughs> I think it's also in that case, having the right balance and mm -hmm. showing appreciation. Um, but yeah, like shaking hands is, is, is something like touching a person in a respectful way is a sign of a respect. Like a handshake, a good handshake. <laughs> so there's one part of being a gentleman that I, I think we can't end this conversation without talking about, and that is online conduct. Like how you conduct yourself online, like whether it's leaving a comment on a social media post or post posting on forums, that's sort of a very, very big part of how we engage with each other now. And I think it's too easy, as I see as someone with a YouTube channel, and I'm sure you see as well on your Instagram it's too easy for people to be anonymous and leave hateful comments and say things that they wouldn't normally say to you if they weren't right in front of you. Absolutely. Um, I would also say that um, that is part of, of empathy is also a big part of, of being a gentleman. And in that case, having the um, knowing, knowing how to put yourself in the situation of the other person and like seeing his point of view, his or her point of view, like mm -hmm. how does the person I sent this message out to perceives it, mm -hmm. uh, receives it. And um, that, is a, that is something I think a lot of people don't really think about. And um, if they would get a comment like that, uh, like a hatred comment um, in my situation, they would, or in your situation, they would be angry. 
and that's that's mm-hmm. how that's how I always approach people sending me. I don't really get hatred messages, but mm. like very impolite messages, like "Where's this from?" And sometimes I just reply like, "Hey, do you ever talk to people like that, just being so demanding, people mm. you don't know?" Like, mm, no, I'm not. Like, just showing people you, that. So you, so you'll actually like call people out. Oh yeah, uh, like just just to that person. Like, I'm just. It's uh-huh. always always direct message conversations. That's why I do that. I sometimes don't do that anymore because just. Also, negative feeling for myself, but sometimes I feel like you do have to educate some people. Like being like, "Hey, you're talking. You're talking to a person you've never met before. How do you think I I receive your message?" And they're mm-hmm. like, "Oh, yeah, you're right." And that's what I have to say. Like a lot of people are very um, open to that. Like, "Hey, you're absolutely correct." And also, there are a lot of people saying, "Like, hey, um, be, being very, very polite." And uh, I uh, I got I think I got really uh really polite followers so i don't really get into those situations what about you same in in general i rarely get a negative comment on instagram on youtube though that's a whole different thing because people i always know when a video is getting a second life in a way because there's the initial when you post it there's your initial subscribers but then people will discover it later on and so on and then maybe six months or a year later it finds a new life somehow and then I always know when that happens because then all of a sudden these really negative comments start rolling in. Oh. And yeah, it's it's frustrating. It's frustrating. I, I It's just part of the gig and part of how people are on YouTube. And that's what I'm saying. It's it's easy to be anonymous. Like what I don't think people would leave those, would say something like that right to my face if we just met. But like you, some of them... A lot of them I will just ban from the channel because honestly I don't have time to deal with to deal with that. Mm-hmm. I have a commenting policy, and there's all these things if if, if it's racist or you know swearing and uh, you know misogynistic or a- anything just really nasty. Like I just don't. If if you're gonna d- leave that kind of comment, like okay. I don't need you to view the channel. Some of them are sort of borderline, though. Yeah, and and I I will chal- I will challenge people from time to time, mm-hmm. just like hey, can you? It's these one word answers or two word answers or like this sucks or most terrible in the world. I'm like, okay, well they want to engage, but if they want, but if they're going to engage in the comments, they need to give something a little bit better than that. So I will actually engage those people and say, what do you mean exactly? I, I'm honestly I want to hear your opinion, but I want to cultivate like a discussion here in the comments. And we can only do that if you are contributing to the discussion in a constructive way. So some people, some people will, I think some people kind of sit up straight, a little straighter like, Oh, Mm. I didn't think that someone would actually take the time to respond and be respectful. Mm -hmm. Some people delete their comments after they're called out. Um, Oh, really? Yeah. It's all different, all different kinds of people, just like everywhere, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I feel like, um, yeah, sometimes if you're you're in a in a um, patient mood, let's put it that way, and uh, you take the time to respond and take the time to really think about a good respond. And if I start in a very understanding kind of way, like, hey, um, I think I see your point, but would you mind like giving me a like a a closer description be be more more precise and because i really really want to stand what you're saying ba- basically what you just said is like mm-hmm. being very i'm very open to what you what you really mean and then people don't really they never really um they wouldn't have expected this positivity and uh, that's very interesting how people react then that's how yeah. i always try to do it and uh coming from that point of view like being hey i'm on your side but mm-hmm. why don't you tell me a bit more and people are like oh somebody's hearing me so and then 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 people get kind of kind of nice but it's interesting that pe- some people really need this this um etiquette push mm-hmm. it's just too easy to fire things off like that and not think about the consequences or you know say you say something really terrible who's going to see that eventually so maybe someone figures out that that's you that's making all those nasty comments like a future boss or your parents or a girlfriend or something. 
Mm. That doesn't really reflect well. So, have you also realized that if some if some someone really um, sends one, if, if there's just one comment that's negative, then some people kind of see get the courage to also write something something hatredful because I feel like that's that's mm. with some people if they they see there is potential to just unload people will unload for me personally i think what what i've seen is that if one person does it, it like people who leave comments like that i don't think take the time to read the other comments hmm. so I, i don't i don't necessarily think that's the case for me one thing i will do though <laughs> little little trick is if there is sort of a very negative but well thought out comment That's very contrary to what I said in the video or what the majority of commenters are saying that are saying about that video. I pin that comment to the top. Mm -hmm. So it's the first comment that people see. So sometimes if it's, <laughs> I'll leave a hateful comment up like that just to see what, you know, make up to let, allow other people to engage with it and engage with the person who obviously wanted to engage, but it's rare and it has to be a very well thought out counterpoint. Type that's cool because you're showing you're showing people that you really care about what they're saying and you're interested in discussion and not not just letting your opinion rule and that's mm -hmm. that's a good thing that's that, yeah. yeah i like that i like that approach yeah well i mean i'm not an expert about everything i talk about i just know from my own experience and that's what i'm sharing mm -hmm. so I'm, i'm happy to learn more all the time absolutely <laughs> well this has been a great discussion I like this topic. I'm glad glad you suggested it. I like I like this topic too, but I also think there's just so much more to it. That's why um, I think this is a good start. But there are there are much more aspects to it, and I'm very interested in, in in hearing more from the people. I think we need to get a couple of our female friends on here to talk about the 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 um, how to treat a woman in the that modern cool. day well, modern gentleman. So we'll we'll talk about that and figure out. Uh, who we'll have and when we'll do it. That'll be a future episode. I, I mm -hmm. agree. That's a great, great future topic. Uh, now that I'm saying um a lot, I feel like I'm getting to the end of, I don't have much more to say. So maybe this is a good time to wrap it up. I think this was a good episode. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I'm getting into it as well. Like with the language, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. I need to check out Sapiens. 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 How far into that are you? Oh, I'm stuck with at, at 120 pages, I think, because it was just so much work the last couple of two other the last two weeks. That's why, like, if you wake up and you're like, today I got to do this and that, and there's not really, I don't really have the, the, the patience to read. Uh, yeah. There's one thing I wanted to add concerning concerning the comments. Um, that's it's very interesting because hatred comments that really depends on your character how you how you deal with that because to me and you said you just you just leave it at that you don't read the rest of the comments and because to me i'm very i'm, very, I'm a very harmonic person and i need harmony around me mm -hmm. and i try to create harmony and that's why if i receive negative comments hatred comments i'm i just get into this i i, I try to solve it i try to make people happy mm -hmm. and that's that's why i can't really deal with those comments that's why i'm very lucky that i don't get much Because really annoys me and uh, kind of kind of kind of desperates me sometimes. No, I get it. The, the, one thing I've learned is you can't please everyone. There's always going to be know, someone, but I always try. I know it's it's tough. And what I think people don't understand that as much as I can say like, oh, I'll I'll just let this roll off. Like there are some that it bothers me. You know, like the first thing you wake up in the morning and you see like a bunch of negative comments. It's like this isn't how I want to start my day. Hmm. screw you guys, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it does, it does affect you in some way, but I think, as you say, how you deal with it says a lot about you, how you deal with it outwardly and to, to mm -hmm. people, you know, mm -hmm. what you're showing other people, because like, listen, we're leading by example in a lot of ways for mm -hmm. people. And I think it's important to be conscious of that. So very well said, because um, it's interesting because I felt like social media really helped me to become a better person, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It sounds weird, but what I mean is before I was like, you know what, this is just me and either you take it the way it is or don't, 
uh, I didn't really mind. Um, but once I, I got I got a following, I really, I, and, and some people start um, recognizing me in the streets. It doesn't happen very often, to be honest. Um, but if they do, uh, and once I started doing, um, I was like, okay, so people see me, people see my actions. So you better be nice to everyone. Even if you're not in the mood, just be nice because I don't know, at first it was like people could know you, but this really turned into a whole new state of conscious. And that's a, honestly, it's a beautiful thing to really, mm -hmm. this makes me a better person. It's nice. It's cool. And I think that's going to be the final word. That's a great place to leave it. So we'll be back here in a couple weeks or so with more. And until then, we, we're good. going to invite everyone to comment down below. We're going to be, I know there were some questions about wanting to not just be able to see this, but to be able to download it too. And, and we're working on getting it up. We'll have it on Apple Podcasts. I'll put it on Stitcher, Spotify, and TuneIn. If there are any others that people who've watched to the end here and listened want to have it on, we can certainly <laughs> we can certainly hook that up, iHeartRadio. I don't know. Uh, so it's very easy to do. Just let us know down in the comments and suggest some future topics for us as well. And chime in with your thoughts about all of these things we've been talking about for the past hour about how to be a gentleman now, today, a contemporary gentleman, a modern gentleman. So Eustace, another good episode. Good to see you. Good I'll to see you see too. You. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to oh. me. I didn't take any time. We're talking to each other. I'm not talking to you. Yes, still, still. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it there. Thanks, everyone. Bye.